What up, watch peeps? One of you, my many loyal viewers, has loaned me in a watch from a brand I've not handled before and some of you might not have heard of, Collins Watch Co. Now, Jimmy Collins started Collins Watch in 2016 after starting an eyewear company, sunglasses and such. Interesting pivot, but apparently he's a watch guy with a pension for design. What I have in is one of their first models, the Bronson, which is basically a Type A dial Flieger style watch. Now, I almost backed their second offering, the Hyperion, which is pretty much a redo of the Bronson with a different dial and a Swiss movement. Their most recent offering is a dive watch, the Sonar, which comes in quite a few interesting colorways. Like I said, I've never handled a watch from this brand before, so I was quite interested in uh, getting a closer look. If you're enjoying the channel, subscribing is a huge help and always much appreciated. All right, let's get to it. I'm Pete, and we are... Chillin' with watches. All right, first things first, wrist check. Wearing the Zen U50. I have been wearing this thing pretty much nonstop since it arrived. Such an easy wear. I can, it goes with anything. I can wear it for all the things I do. Really in love with this watch. Today what we're looking at is the Collins. You get your outer cardboard box. Inside you'll find your one year warranty card and Collins Watch Co. instructions. Inside the outer cardboard box, you will find the inner leather or maybe faux leather hinged box. And you will see Collins Watch Co., which is out of Los Angeles. On the pillow, you will find your watch. And like I said, this is the Collins Bronson, their first release. And right away, you'll notice that carbon fiber dial. And it's actually a pretty cool dial. I don't know if there's like a clear layer on top of the carbon fiber that the dial text and indices are then printed on because I don't know if you can see this in camera, but when you move it around, the carbon fiber moves behind the text. And it's a pretty cool effect. Pretty neat watch. Now this watch, um, the Bronson ranged in price from their base model, which was a stainless steel case, plain black dial at 395, up to the model we have here with the uh, PVD case, carbon fiber dial at 445. And best I can tell, um, this model is still available. All the models of the Bronson are still available on their website. I think that is in part, their pricing across the board seems slightly high to me. Um, I always say I hate to judge a company or say what a watch should cost, but then I go right ahead and do it. But their most reasonably priced watch was a quartz chronograph. They had it came in around 200 bucks. And interestingly, they are the only two models which were sold out. So the dial layout. Basic type A dial for a Flieger. You basically just get 1 through 12 with a triangle at 12 o'clock. Um... I think they did it well here. I like the font choice. The handset, one of my favorite things about this watch. I think they're very cool. It has the faux patina. This is old radium loom. Not everybody likes that. I actually do, and especially with the darker cases, I think it looks really cool. Case profile on this guy is pretty basic. There's nothing groundbreaking here. Um, nothing real shocking to see. It's a rather flat underside. The case itself is, it's a matte finish, as you'll see. It's um, not brushed, not polished. It's kind of like a sandblasted PVD finish. Cool choice for a Flieger, I think. The matte finish makes sense. Uh, it does not have drilled lugs. And the case back is a see-through case back. And this is a sapphire um, case back, as well as sapphire on the front. So showing you the Seiko NH35 movement, which for me, uh, I know a lot of people, especially those who are new into the watch hobby, like a display case back because they like to see this. They like to show it to people and see what's going on. For me, I've seen one, you've seen them all. I don't care to see the movement. It's just not something I find all that interesting, especially not if it's a base model movement like a Seiko or a Miyota. The water resistance on this is 10 atmospheres or 100 meters. 
Now, the crown grip is another interesting aspect. I believe this crown is supposed to look like a uh, some sort of volume knob. I think Jimmy Collins has a background in audio, and this looks like the knob on some sort of soundboard. You can see there's a slight notch. It is a sign crown with a C for Collins, but whatever um, whatever it is, the grip on it is great. It's real easy to use. Crown size, uh, it's also a good size too. Seven millimeter crown. It's not screw down. It's just a push pull crown, so you can wind it right from this position. Obviously it pops out to time setting and let's see if we can get a date flip here. Standard Seiko date flip. It looked like it flipped right at midnight. Stopped easily in the date setting position. You can you can feel when you're in date setting easy enough. All the way back out to time setting. And it winds quite smoothly, actually. Now this is a 40 millimeter case, which is a good choice for the style. My I mean, perfect for me would be maybe 38 or 39 for this style, but a 40 is wearable by a, a lot of wrist sizes. It's super comfortable, no real problems there. The lug to lug is comes in 48.4 lug to lug, thickness 12.3, and these are 20 millimeter lugs. Now the leather strap, it comes on, it's a very thick leather strap and it looks like, it feels like a high quality leather strap. And whoever had this, they must not have used it because it's pretty much got like the one spot where it locks on the pillow. And other than that, it doesn't look like it has much wear on it at all, but decent leather strap. Let's take a look at it on my wrist. So here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist and you'll see it's a really great fit. Um, would fit a lot of wrist sizes. I think if you have a much smaller wrist, you might want to go a little smaller than this, but it's an easy wear. It has, like I said, it has that very flat um, underside to the wrist, which if you can notice right in here, it, that lug does stick up just slightly. And I have a rather flat top of the wrist. Maybe it's where it's sitting, but decent size watch. And on this leather strap, it came in at 85 grams. So let's take a look at it on the time grapher. Seiko movements don't always give you the best read on a time grapher, but this one, well, up, in, up until I hit record on the camera, it was running at about minus four seconds a day. It looks like it's settling in at minus nine. 280 is a decent amplitude for a Seiko movement. A minimal beat error at 0.1 milliseconds. Let's take a look at it side by side, some other watches. So here it is side by side, the 41 millimeter Tudor Ranger. Uh, pretty similar dial to bezel size ratios on these two watches. So you're gonna get a pretty similar wear out of them. Thickness wise as well. Here it is with the slightly smaller 38 millimeter Serica field watch. Now the Serica has a smaller dial and a larger bezel than the Collins. So that's gonna give it an even smaller appearance. And I think you can see that in this side-by-side -side comparison. Serica is also a slightly thinner watch. Now here's another 38 millimeter, the Sector Field case. Now this one has a larger dial and skinnier bezel than the Serica, more on par with what the Collins has, so it's more accurate comparison. And I think you'll see it wears just slightly smaller than that. So let's talk about my likes and dislikes while I put some specs up on the screen. Uh, the handset is probably my favorite thing about this watch. I really love the black centers, the black outlines. I think they're very sharp, they're very crisp. The handset looks great. I love the font choice for the numerals. I just think it has a nice military feel without being over the top. 
And I really love the date frame, if we can. It's kind of like a broken up frame there that just has, lends a little more towards that aviation feel. Dislikes, well, the design is, is pretty basic. There's nothing groundbreaking here. Uh, the case is quite standard. There's nothing really unique about it. Um, nothing stands out, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't speak to my taste. Uh, lastly, the PVD. The gunmetal is hard to wear because you're not going to get any other straps that come with gunmetal. Um, maybe straight black would have been better because then you can use black hardware, NATOs and such. Um, with this, your only choice is really to reuse this gunmetal tang that came on the leather. Otherwise, your strap choices are going to be quite limited. Lastly, would I buy it? Uh, probably not at this price point. I want, well, I don't want better. I guess I should say I want something that's a little more different, a little more unique. I get it, the carbon fiber dial is different, and that is unique. And if that speaks to you, I think that this is a really good choice. But I'm, I'm not sure it's really to my taste. All right, lastly, let's... Keep the loom. And there it is. This is old radium loom, which I'm a big fan of. I think it, the brightness wise, it's pretty close to a C3. And this particular application, very even amongst the hands to the dial indices, very bright. No complaints. That's a great application of loom. All right, let's flip the camera back around and wrap this thing up. So there it is guys, the Collins Bronson, a tidy little Flieger style watch. And believe me, I get it, the carbon fiber dial, it is different, it is unique. Is it something I do? I'm still not sure, but I do like different when it comes to watches. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Before I let you go, power rankings. What? Don't worry, we'll still do sneaker checks, but I thought we'd mix it up with something a little different every now and then. My top five favorite cereals in order are number five, Corn Pops. Number four, Reese Puffs. Number three, Cookie Crisp. Number two, Lucky Charms. And number one, <laughs> Peanut Butter Captain Crunch. All right, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.